Meyer and this is Digital Photography Class. Today I'm going to show you how to adjust your exposure for your photos uh, with the Levels Adjustment Layer in Photopea. Alright, first we're going to go to Chrome and type in photopea.com. Okay, once we're there, we're going to be opening a new, uh, we're going to be opening a photo from our computer. So you should have taken the pictures uh, and then downloaded them onto your computer desktop and put them in your digital photo folder and in the project folder. This week we are working on the found alphabet project. So we're going to go to uh, from computer and we are going to go to our desktop, go to digital photo class, and then navigate to the found alphabet folder. Okay, and we are going to open this one right here. This is one of my students' works. Okay. There we go. All right, uh, I just pushed control command zero Control Command Zero, that's a keyboard shortcut to make the image fit the screen. Okay, so we have discussed what good exposure looks like. Um, we want to see a maximum black, a maximum white, and um, we want to be able to see into the shadows and into the highlights. We want to see texture uh, and detail in the shadows and highlights. And it's nice to have a broader range of grays as well. All right, so we're going to, uh, this one is a little bit dark. You can see we're starting to lose detail in the shadow areas. Um, so we'd like to kind of open those up. All right, so um, to do this, we're going to be going over to our uh, layers palette, which is over on the right. Right down here, we have the layers palette. And then at the very bottom of the layers palette, we see a bunch of little icons. If you hold your cursor over any of the icons, it will tell you the name of it. We are looking for the new adjustment layer. So it's this half black, half white, half black circle. You click on it and you're going to get a pop-up menu. All right. And we are going to be going to our levels adjustment layer. Okay. In levels, we're going to see um, what's called a histogram. A histogram is a graphical uh, representation of all of the tones in the photograph. Okay, so this, you know, the this line shows you how many or how much of how many pixels uh, are that particular tone. So you can see what the tones are based on these little sliders down here. So over here on the right we have um, maximum white. So that is the whitest white that you can get. You can't um, go any, like, you can't go one step whiter, okay? On the other end, we have maximum black, which again is the blackest black that you can get. You cannot go at one step darker than black, than that black, okay? And then we have the, our mid-tone. This is our middle gray. You can kind of see this slider scale down here to give you an idea of what the tones look like that this graph is representing. We're going to leave this slider alone and we're going to be using the, the sliders up here. Okay, so you can see here in this particular picture that we have a spike here in the mid grays, okay, and then we have a spike in the dark grays over here, okay. So we can see the dark grays are here the, the mid grays are probably more of the background. Okay, so one other thing to notice here on this histogram is that there's a giant gap. So there is no uh, data for white or for any of the light grays. Okay, so those tones are missing in this photo because it's a darker photo. Photos that are uh, underexposed, that are dark, are gonna be the histogram, the data is gonna be more over here bunched up on the left. And then any image that is overexposed is going to be the opposite. You're going to have all of the data bunched up on the right. Okay, when you have a giant gap like this, 
you can reassign the lightest tone. If you look super close, you can see there's a little bit of tone. You can see some data right here. Okay, but if I take this slider and I pull it in towards the data and stop when I hit um, where the data begins, okay, so the whole picture you can see got lighter. Now if I kept going, it would make everything get lighter and lighter. So now every tone from here back is becoming white. So if I keep going, it eventually will make everything white or just about everything white. Okay. Now if I use if I go the other way and pull the black slider in, okay, now it's we're starting to lose the detail in the shadow tones. So it's getting darker and darker until we lose all the detail. And then it starts to make the background, the midtones, and the whites go black as well until everything's black. Okay, now since our data goes all the way across to this side, we don't need to move the black slider. We're going to leave it there. Okay, it's only when there's a big gap like here. All right, and then we can move the midtone slider as well. If I move it to the left, I'm expanding the lighter gray tones. If I move it to the right, I'm expanding the darker gray tones. So we want to add detail in the midtones and the and in the shadows a bit. So we're going to move this over. We don't want it to be too bright. Okay, and when it's too bright, it starts to look low contrast. Everything has this kind of dull gray look to it. So we do want a variety of tones. So I'm going to just try and place it maybe right, maybe right about there. Okay, you can kind of use your eyes and, and make the decision yourself what you think looks good. But again, look to, you don't want to lose the detail in the darker areas. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. That looks nice. Um, so now I'm going to save the image. Since I have, oh, by the way, you can turn this layer off and on to see what it looked like before and after. So it looks a lot better. Okay. And now I can save it. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Save as PSD, because I would like it to save the adjustment layer. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to drag it over to the desktop okay and then I actually could have probably cropped it as well this is the letter V um, but I have a different video for you to watch cropping okay so for now this one's saved I would change the name to the first name and the last name of the student Okay, this project is FA for found alphabet, okay, period six, and then we are going to um, call it letter V. If there's more than one V, you can call it V1. All right, and now I can drag it into my edited folder, so I'm going to go back to my digital photo class folder, go to found alphabet, and I've started an edited FA folder where I have the ones that I've been working on. Once you have it completely um, edited, you would save it as a JPEG, okay? Because we're gonna um, need the flattened out version for our final part of the project. All right, that's it, thank you.